Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at some code I actually wrote a year ago, um, this neural network from scratch in C, and we're gonna be looking at how to parallelize this code using a API called OpenMP. OpenMP is an API for creating shared memory multi-threaded programs, and it allows programmers to easily parallelize their existing code in an incremental fashion, rather than rewriting their whole entire program. But while we are on the topic, I'd like to take a brief moment to explain the meaning of a shared memory multi-threaded program. A shared memory multi-threaded program is a program that launches multiple parallel threads to increase its bandwidth and throughput. Think about your internet bandwidth, it's measured in gigabytes per second. And throughput is the number of operations that we can perform. This is usually measured in flops or floating point operations. Here's a diagram of what a shared memory multi-threaded program would look like. As you can see, we have the shared memory bank at the bottom. This contains global variables that each thread can access, as well as different operating system resources, such as file handles, internal buffers, and the actual instructions that our threads will be running. Each thread runs on a CPU core, and we can also have multiple threads running on each core. Threads, they are also known as lightweight processes, and they have their own stack and set of registers so that they can run independently of each thread. So with that brief overview of OpenMP, let's look how we can apply this so that we can write faster code. So over here, I'm on my GitHub account and I'm looking at this MNIST from scratch um, repo. I will provide the link in the description and I'm just gonna clone this repository. So if we just run git clone, type in the URL and we should have the repo. So now we can CD into it and open up our favorites editor VS Code. So the first thing we're going to want to do inside of VS Code is edit our C flags so that we can actually include OpenMP in our program. So to do that, we can just add dash F OpenMP and that handles it for us. Very simple. Now make sure your GCC is in the, is the right executable because sometimes I've had problems um, on my MacBook uh, when I've tried to compile this code with Clang. So just be notable about that. Make sure um, you're using the right standard of C um, and that your compiler is up to date. And you can obviously troubleshoot that as you, as you must. So the thing about multi-threaded shared memory programs is that we can only really parallelize tasks of code that are data independent. So what do I mean by data independent? I mean that the computation of one result does not rely on a previous computation. So something that is data dependent would have to be inherently synchronous, but something that is data independent, we can parallelize pretty easily. And that's the main draw of OpenMP, is that we can parallelize code very easily. As you'll see, all we need to do to parallelize this double for loop is to add one line of code. And that would be pragma OMP parallel for collapse to. So what is this doing? This is basically taking this for loop and distributing it across our CPU cores or our number of threads, which we can specify, so that it can run and it can be processed simultaneously. So for example, if we think about our 2D array, maybe the first two rows get assigned to our first core, the next two rows get assigned to our second core, and the final two rows get assigned to our third core. And they're processed simultaneously so that our, can resu our result can be obtained in one third of the time it would be if we were to just execute this code synchronously. So let's add one more thing, because I want to check the actual speed up by the number of threads you include. So let's define a variable here. Let's define max threads. And we'll just set this to one in our case. So this will just be if the program was synchronous, but we will adjust this as we go. And then we're gonna add num threads right here to specify the number of threads we would like to parallelize this across. Now, we're gonna only apply these operations or this parallelization to our operations because a lot of the code within a neural network relies on previous computations and it is inherently data dependent. Take for example, our neural network.c file where we've defined a bunch of stuff about a neural network. 
let's look at this network train function. You can see that all these steps where we compute the dot product, we apply a function, we do the dot product again, they're very, very synchronous. For example, we need to know what um, the final inputs are before we can apply the sigmoid function. And only then we need the results from our hidden inputs and our hidden outputs. So you can see it's very synchronous. And I mean, it's not just the network train. Um, another intuition I had would be to parallelize this across training the whole batch. But you can't really do that because it's a, it's a synchronous updating of the weights. So on our first image, we adjust the, the weights a little bit. On the next image, we're going to adjust those weights a little bit differently. So we need to, we can't train these all at one time. We need to train them in an iterative fashion. So after we've added all these pragmas um, to our, sorry, to our operations, let's actually adjust the number of threads we're working with and see how the, the time changes, the time to train changes, because that's what most of our um, time is spent doing in this case. The prediction isn't too intense, um, but it's mostly the training. So I'm just going to add these to all of my double for loops. We could add it to other functions as well, but the most bang for our buck is in the arena of the um, operations we're applying to our matrices. So that looks to be good. Let's see if we can make this. Okay, so that's my bad. I put num threads in all these. It should be defined as num threads up here. Okay, so we made it. And now let's actually go here and comment this out so that we can see it running. Run make. And we get a segmentation fault. And that's because we have not created the data. So let's actually do that. Um, so let's copy these commands right here and paste them in. That should download and extract the data set into a file called data. And then we can just remove this eminence in CSV. I'm going to make clean so that we have everything and then make and it should start running. So you can see it's taking, it's quite slow actually. Um, for a 10,000 step iter iteration, it's going to take a little while. And I actually want to know the exact time it's going to take. So we're going to use the time function if you're on Unix to see what this is. Okay, so you can see it took about 23 seconds to run the whole program. Our CPU spent 22 seconds executing, and then the system spent some time doing stuff that the operating system has to do. Maybe it's writing to a file. Maybe it's switching contexts between the different threads. Maybe it's scheduling threads. Maybe it's just showing threads, something. But it took about one second doing that. Okay, so let's change that um, variable we defined earlier in our operations dump threads. Let's change that to four and see the performance. I'm gonna run make clean and make one more time. And you can already see it is way faster way faster this time. It's blazing fast. Okay, so this time it took about 11 real seconds and you can see that it took uh, the CPU 45 seconds. So why is it more for, why is it more now? Well, we have to consider that we've, we're running this on possibly four cores, four different threads. So you should see about, the real time it took was about 10 seconds per thread or core. But because it's across four, we're going to multiply that number by four. And then the system spent about the same time executing. So let's see if we can get this real time down a little bit more by increasing the number of threads to eight. Once again, the clean. And then I'm going to time the main function. And yes, it is running much, much faster now, about 10 seconds. And we will continue to 16, nine seconds. So we still. We still saw a performance increase and with 24 threads, 
as we can see, it's not as fast. So why, what is happening? Why is 24 threads problematic? So let's actually check. So once this, once this stops running, we're going to check how many threads my CPU has so that we can kind of get a, get a gauge for what should work. Okay, as you can see in the 24 thread case, it took 22 seconds, which is about two times the amount of time it took for just eight threads. And we, we added three times as many threads, so you would think that the time would get cut in to a third, but it actually doubled, which is shocking. And to check the number of threads, we can just run n proc. So it tells me I have 24 threads on my CPU. So why did it take more time with 24 threads? The thing about threading is it's not a perfect trade-off. If we add more threads, this is not necessarily a good thing for our performance. Because each time we create a thread, there's some implicit overhead the operating system has to undergo. Like we said earlier, we have to set up our own stack and our own set of registers for each thread, which is sort of expensive in the case when we don't really need it. And if we think about it, if the data we're dealing with isn't that large, we don't need a whole lot of threads. If we have 100 data elements we're operating on and we have 150 threads of execution, we just have 50 threads doing nothing. So in our case, the data we're operating on is not necessarily smaller than 24, but it's not big enough to warrant needing all 24 threads. The eight threads are fast enough for us. So this is why it's always good to kind of profile a program when you're doing parallel programming, because sometimes our intuition doesn't lead us down the right path. Too much of a good thing is not always a good thing, right? So in this case, we, we threw too many threads at our, at our program, at our um, computations. It just overwhelmed the operating system to the point where creating the extra threads had so much overhead that it actually slowed down our computation. So that's all I have for you guys today. I guess what we can do is we can always test the network and just make sure that the um, prediction percentage we're getting is still up to par about 90 percent which is what we were gaining earlier a 90 percent accuracy isn't bad given our network has only one hidden layer with 300 um, parameters so i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, in the next video we're going to be going over how to parallelize this code using gpus and in particular the cuda runtime so i hope you guys stay tuned um as for me i haven't been creating many videos because i just Starting my first year of college, I'm at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign studying computer science. So it's been an amazing experience. Um, and yeah, I last year I kind of didn't have much time with the whole college application process. But um, if there's any young student students, uh, high school students in uh, watching these videos, if you guys have any questions about the college admissions process, just feel free to reach out to me. Um, leave a comment and I will answer your questions. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have an amazing week, day, month, year, and stay tuned for more content and remember to keep learning. Have a good one.